So this is a nanodrop. This is how you measure concentrations of DNA. Um, you can also use it for protein, but really this is mainly used for DNA. Um, this one's a particularly fancy one. Uh, you can use it for 96 well plates, um, and it also has eight channels for measuring here. So usually you'd probably just have the basic model with a single channel this type. When you open it up, you can see you get some different options. We'll just go with nucleic acid. The process of measuring your DNA sample is fairly straightforward, and the software helps you out quite a bit with walking you through all the steps. The first thing that you'll have to do is to add a water sample just to clean the instrument. When you're loading the samples, you only need one microliter of any of the liquids. That's one of the advantages of this nanodrop system. You really don't waste much of your samples. Once it's loaded, you can just hit OK and the instrument will initialize. Once that's done, you'll want to load in your blank sample. This is whatever you've resuspended your DNA in, and you do the step to remove any effect the resuspension could have on the absorbent spectra. Sometimes the resuspension is just water, but in this case, we're using a TRIS buffered solution. Again, this is just one microliter. Then you can click OK on the next step, and it will go through the blanking process. Now you can add in your sample ID. In this case, I'm just calling it test. And you can go ahead and clean off the blank from the nanodrop and add in your DNA. Once that's done, you can hit the measure button, and voila! There are a couple important features to look at once the analysis is complete. In the top right, you've got your concentration of DNA. You'll probably be working with somewhere between 20 nanogram per microliter and 100 nanogram per microliter in most cases. This sample just happens to be quite concentrated. Then in the middle, you have the graph that shows the DNA peak. If it's a nice clean sample, it should look like the example shown here. And sometimes you may get contamination from protein, which shows up as peak at 280 nanometers. Then you can use the 260 over 280 ratio to check for purity. If it's 1.8 or higher, it's fairly pure DNA. And that's it. That's how you use a nanodrop.